Growing up, the Bermuda Triangle was a big deal. The mysterious trilateral territory boasts tales of ships and planes going missing, gone without a trace. But once speculation stops and science steps in, it's clear that the whole mystery is fairly easy to explain. Today, we're talking about the Bermuda Triangle and debunking the myths surrounding this conspiracy. But before we fly into the unknown, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know in the comments below what other strange occurrences you would like to hear about. Okay, now let's get lost in some weird history. The one thing everybody knows about the Bermuda Triangle is that people go missing there. Ever since Flight 19 and its 14 crew members disappeared in the area in 1945, legends of this cursed section of sea have skyrocketed as more and more aircraft and people go missing. What most people don't appreciate about the triangle is that it's big, really big. While maps of the supposed area tend to differ, it can generally be described as the area spanning from Miami to San Juan, then stretching all the way to the island of Bermuda. That's a pretty hefty hunk of ocean. All that space is smack dab in the middle of high traffic areas when it comes to boats and planes. And naturally, with a lot of traffic and a big deep ocean, you're going to see a lot of people go missing. Or more accurately, you're not going to see them. One generally curious aspect of the Bermuda Triangle isn't its penchant for magically gobbling up every ship that enters its domain. It's the clouds, man. The skies that float above the triangle are filled with unusual hexagonal shaped clouds with perfectly straight edges that can span from 20 to 55 miles across. We know this sounds like something out of Sesame Street with all these shapes, but the reality is not so pleasant. These precarious polygons create some pretty dangerous air blasts. The winds they generate reach up to 170 miles per hour and can slam any unfortunate vessels which happen to be in the area at the time. And that's not all they can do. These clouds are also capable of shooting the bursts of air directly down on top of planes, which in turn creates 45-foot waves for any ships that survived the initial blast. A real combo attack. Hexagon clouds were probably not the shape you expected to be the culprit here. While we're on the subject of storms, we have to bring up hurricanes. After all, the Atlantic Ocean is just lousy with them. And while the Atlantic coastlines may look lovely, they're also a veritable hotbed for inclement weather. Within the triangle itself, the cold air fronts that meet with the warm water create the perfect cocktail of chaotic weather. You don't want to be a weary water traveler when that happens. But as the story goes, too many do brave the nasty tempests and pay the price for not respecting the triangle. Everyone has their theories about what causes the disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle. Some say alien abductions. Others think sea monsters are responsible. But one scientist, Karl Kruschelniski, says he can easily explain all the disappearances. His theory replaces aliens with bad weather and sea monsters with plain old human error. The patch of sea where the Bermuda Triangle calls home is a particularly rough patch when it comes to the sky, the air, and, well, all of it. Pair that with high amounts of air and sea traffic driven by accident-prone humans and you have yourself a recipe for disaster. Krushelniski believes the combination of the high waves and even higher winds is a lethal trap for a distracted or inexperienced pilot or sailor. The triangle gets a bad rep for the sheer surplus of ships and planes it devours. So much so that it is the subject of many statistical studies. One such study done by Lloyds of London and the United States Coast Guard showed that, in fact, the Bermuda Triangle just ain't that special. The results from the study showed that the loss of life and cargo is really the same percentage-wise as most any other area. They just don't brag about it as much. But media bias against the triangle aside, you can't really define such a large, dangerous area and then be surprised when vessels start to go missing there. It's practically expected. In your mind, picture a big wave. Bigger, bigger, yes, yes, that's the one. Now, multiply that by about 10. That's around how large waves can rise up out of the ocean at just about any old time they want. When the weather is rough, it's not surprising to see waves up to 98 feet high. 
Obviously, that's bad news for any ships sailing the ocean blue at that time. But waves that high are also capable of knocking low-flying planes right out of the sky. The study done by Lloyds of London seems to back up this theory, and even attributes a 49-foot sporadic wave and sailor inexperience as the cause for the loss of Flight 19, which we'll get to later. Flight 19 was the name given to a group of five torpedo bombers that became famous for going completely MIA. It isn't every day that five planes, 14 airmen, and the subsequent team sent to find them all vanish without a trace. And the little evidence or statistical analysis at the time only led to a wave of conjecture and whisper down the lane type shenanigans. This was the 1960s, well before you could take the internet out of your pocket and debunk something instantly. When word of the Navy fleet disappearing all over the Atlantic began to spread, so did the tall tales. Capitalizing on this triangle frenzy were writers that only served to add more flame to the fires of speculation. An Argosy Magazine article titled The Deadly Bermuda Triangle was written by Vincent Gaddis in 1964 and started much of the lore surrounding the patch of water today. But once these stories devolve into whimsical tales about the lost city of Atlantis, it becomes harder to take them seriously. You're going to hear a lot of talk that says Flight 19 was flying in ideal conditions and thus their disappearance can only be explained by something otherworldly. To that, we say, hold on. Despite what some, quote, historians, end quote, will tell you about the flying conditions that fateful day, we know the facts. The most famous disappearance in Bermuda Triangle history was, as it turned out, just extremely unlucky. Since this was a training mission, the crew was less than desirable for the conditions. When you're battling 49-foot waves in a low-flying plane, you want an experienced captain, which they had, however, he was overcoming a hangover at the time. Hey, we've all been there, Cap. Like a Larry David and Curb Your Enthusiasm, where everything just gets worse and worse, things got worse. Lieutenant Charles Taylor, known for being terrible at his job, forgot his watch and had a malfunctioning compass. To make matters worse, nobody on board seemed to even know where they were. So Taylor, living up to his reputation, made a bad decision that led his men deeper into the terrible Atlantic storms and their eventual demise. Just like Curb Your Enthusiasm. While we're talking about Flight 19, we should talk about the rescue planes sent in to find them. They're part of this story, too. While this crew also met their untimely demise in the Atlantic Ocean, they did not simply disappear into thin air as the legends would have you believe. As is typical, this is a detail that gets lost in the fable of it all. Not only did the rescue aircraft remain visible, it straight up exploded. Witnesses claim they saw the aircraft, which had already gained the ominous nickname of Flying Gas Tank, erupt in the sky and its remains crash into the sea. A subsequent investigation found oil and debris where the plane went down, confirming its ending in this unfortunate tale. We talked about Vincent Gaddis, the Mac Daddy of all Bermuda Triangle storytellers. Instead of getting bogged down with facts, Gaddis decided his analysis of the disappearance would sell more copies if he exaggerated the facts to add an aura of mystery. His 1964 article titled The Deadly Bermuda Triangle delved into the notion that the disappearances couldn't possibly be coincidence. Even though the article was published in a magazine that prided itself as an American masterpiece of fiction, the hype worked. His outlandish ideas about disappearances in the small slice of the world inspired other writers and movie makers to give their own spin on the triangle. And that is how legends are born. The Mary Celeste story is an interesting one. A large merchant ship has an uneventful career until one day it disappears. The ship was bound for Italy from New York, but never made it to its destination. It was eventually found adrift in the Atlantic. Its discovery didn't stop Bermuda Triangle speculators from blaming the missing crew and the ship's condition on the three-pointed chunk of ocean. A guy named Charles Berlitz even penned a bestseller called The Bermuda Triangle, which claimed that Mary Celeste was another victim of the Triangle. The book was a world-renowned success, but there was one glaring error within the pages. The ship was found abandoned on a completely different side of the Atlantic, a couple thousand miles away. But if you're still not convinced, hey, we've got a bridge to sell ya. As far as Bermuda Triangle theories go, 
Even we have to admit, this one sounds pretty badass. One explanation for the Bermuda Triangle claims that ships are disappearing into the lost city of Atlantis. The claims of force fields surrounding the city and fire crystals which can burst into pure energy are alleged to be the very things bringing down the planes and ships. What sounds like Jason Momoa working overtime may actually just be methane gas, which is still kind of like talking about Jason Momoa. Methane can become trapped in ice molecules and become methane hydrate. This one admittedly sounds like a bit of a reach since the last time methane trapping would have been around is the Ice Age. And that's like 15,000 years ago. But if this were somehow happening in the past 100 years, it would absolutely impact ships the way this Atlantis conspiracy says it would. No word on how the DC management shakeup news affects this particular theory. We've spent this whole video saying some pretty negative things about the Bermuda Triangle. So let's end with all of us saying one nice thing about the Triangle. We'll go first. Despite its bad reputation, the Triangle is not considered one of the danger zones for cargo ships. Wasn't that nice? Sure, it has its fair share of tropical storms and turbulent weather. And of course, there are disappearances. Can't forget those. But any cargo hauler will tell you there are places so undesirable for ships, they make the Bermuda Triangle look like a kiddie pool. A study in 2013 that ranked the most hostile shipping environments was done by the WWF, the wildlife one, not the hit you upside the head with a steel chair one. And wouldn't you know it, the Triangle didn't even get an honorable mention. It turns out BT is more preferred than the South China Sea, the East Indies, or the British Isles. Maybe next year, Bermuda Triangle. Maybe next year. So what do you think? Do you think the Triangle is real or just nonsense? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Our Weird History.